now transitions to Surah Al-Anfal. What is Al-Anfal? Al-Anfal are the believers collecting the spoils of war after the Battle of Badr. After the battle took place between the people of Mecca, the oppressors of Mecca, and the persecuted, the believers. Right? So you immediately have this transition from Surah Al-A'raf, which is this, you know, like the, the, the persecution of Pharaoh did not work with Musa Islam and his followers. Your persecution would not work. And this, these are the consequences. This is where everyone's going to end up. And in this world, right away, you have Surah Al-Anfal. You have the surah about the spoils of war after the battle of Badr, after Allah made the victory of the believers clear. Uh, you know, and, and it's, it's, it's amazing. Obviously, there's a technical reason to being called Surah Al-Anfal, which is just like later on after the battle of Uhud, the believers now had to deal with property and they have to deal with issues in regards to, to, to family and the, the plethora of widows and orphans and inheritance laws and so on and so forth. Here, they obviously technically now have to deal with the spoils of war um, in Surah Al-Anfal after the Battle of Badr. But it's also, subhanAllah, it's, it's amazing from a spiritual perspective as well. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was just talking about how humiliation does not just come to the oppressors and to the rejectors in, in the next life, but it comes in this world as well. And so here you have Surah Al-Anfal, right? The surah about the spoils after the Battle of Badr. And the entire part of Surat Al-Anfal uh, that we're going to cover in Juz 9 actually all deals with the Battle of Badr. All of it deals with the Battle of Badr and post-Battle of Badr. Uh, so the first entire section, this is the most extensive discourse on the Battle of Badr. So again, the transition is the illustration now of the people of Mecca fighting with the believers that they've chased out to Medina and the promise of Allah's victory to the believers coming true and the humiliation to the disbelievers also coming true. So the scene has been set in Surah Al-A'raf of each one taking his way, taking his course. Victory will come now to the believers. Humiliation would come to the oppressors and to the rejectors. And so you have it all playing out in the battle of Badr. And, and in terms of the way that the Qur'an is set out, in Surah Ali Imran, you know, we mentioned there's a part that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to victory. He alludes to the victory of Badr. Uh, but this is the first full explanation of it. Because in Surah Ali Imran, you're not talking to the audience is not the people of Mecca, right? In Surah Al-A'raf, you have a different situation altogether. So the audience is partly as well the people of Mecca uh, that rejected. And so this is a full explanation of how the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came to them um, in various ways. So if you start to if, if you start to read through Surat Al Anfal, it starts off with Yes Alunaka An Al Anfal that they ask you, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, about the bounties of war, about the spoils of war. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh Anfalu Lillahi wa Rasul, say that the bounties belong to Allah and the Messenger. Fatakullaha wa aslihu dha tabainikum wa atiullaha wa rasula in kuntum mu'mineen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. So say that the decision concerning the bounties, uh, the spoils of war, uh, belongs to God and His Messenger. So be mindful of your Lord and amend that which is between you and obey Allah and His Messenger if you are indeed believers, if you should be believers. Why is Allah mentioning this? Because if you remember, when Allah mentioned a place of victory and a place of success, Allah warns about the things that would destroy a community once a community has attained a level of success. So here in the Battle of Badr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds, وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا وَأَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا That's all in Surah Ali Imran, right? Hold tight to the rope of Allah. Don't be divided. Remember the favor of Allah when He kept your hearts together. So keep your hearts together. Fix the things between you. Don't fight over the, the bounties of this world, right? Stay upon the things that granted you victory upon the fir- in the first place and you will find the aid of Allah to come perpetually. So if you stick to the things that earned you the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the help of Allah in Badr, then the help of Allah will continue to come to you so long as you remain on that course. So this is the, the, the trend now that's set um, in Surah al- uh, Al-Anfal, the spoils of war. And Allah mentions the quality of the believers. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهِ 
ذكر الله وجلت قلوبهم وإذا تليت عليهم آياته زادتهم إيمانا وعلى ربهم يتوكلون that the character of the believers the believers are those who when God is mentioned إذا ذكر الله when Allah is mentioned وجلت قلوبهم their hearts tremble and when the verses of Allah are recited to them it increases them in faith وعلى ربهم يتوكلون and because of that they place their trust in Allah so again, the effect of the Qur'an on them. Surah Nisa mentioned people who have locks on their hearts so they can't even comprehend the Qur'an. Now we're talking about the believers, that the Qur'an causes them to tremble and it causes them to renew their faith in a way, to which, in, in, a way in which they also find it easy to place their trust in Allah. Because once you recognize that this is divine revelation and, and, and you know, that it's coming from Allah, so certainly divine help will come from the one who revealed this divine revelation. So they find it easy to place their trust in Allah when they connect themselves to the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which really shows you the role that the Qur'an is to play in the lives of the believers, especially in times of adversity and in times of tragedy. And if you also connect this subhanAllah in this juz, the last verse of Surah Al-A'raf, the previous surah, which is in this juz, the last verse of Surah Al-A'raf is a verse of sajda, it's a verse of prostration. And, just, and the second verse of the next surah describes the way that the believers react to the revelation. So it forces them in complete awe and humility, and it forces them in prostration and in glorifying their Creator and in glorifying their Lord. So you find that connection here um, in Surah Al-Anfal, الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ Those who established the prayer, and from what we provided for them, they spend, they give charity, أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ حَقَّ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says those are the true believers. لَهُمْ دَرَجَاتٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ وَمَغْفِرَةٌ وَرِزْقٌ كَرِيمٌ They have degrees of high position with their Lord and the forgiveness of their Lord and noble position and a noble position with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam كَمَا أَخْرَجَكَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَيْتِكَ بِالْحَقِّ Allah says, it's just as when your Lord brought you out of your home for, for the battle of Badr in truth, which indeed a party amongst the believers were unwilling. So Allah mentions that some of the believers, they were unwilling to go out in the battle of Badr. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُجَادِلُونَكَ فِي الْحَقِّ بَعْدَمَا تَبَيَّنَ بَعْدَمَا تَبَيَّنَ كَأَنَّمَا um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they argued with you concerning the truth after it has been made clear to you as if they were being driven toward death while they were looking on. Meaning they, they had such a lack of fear. Now notice here, or they had such a, a, a fear of the people of Mecca and such a lack of trust in Allah. Notice here Allah says they're still believers, but there was weakness in their faith. So Allah says a party of the believers, they were hesitant and they were unwilling. But they still had, uh, they, they, you know, they still had some level of faith to where they're classed as believers. So you can't say they're not believers altogether. You don't make, you know, takfir on them and say they're not Muslims or not believers. But their unwillingness showed uh, a lack of trust that the other believers had uh, that went out in the battle of Badr. Um, and Subhanallah, this is where we find now Allah mentions the promise of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in verse seven. Um, that you would have these two parties and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give victory uh, to the believers and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says لِيُحِقَّ الْحَقَّ وَيُبْطِلَ الْبَاطِلِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he should establish truth and abolish falsehood وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْمُجْرِمُونَ even if the criminals despise that that truth would be established and falsehood would perish no matter what and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says إِذْ يَسْتَغِيثُونَ رَبَّكُمْ إِذْ تَسْتَغِيثُونَ رَبَّكُمْ When you called upon your Lord seeking help. تَسْتَغِيثُونَ رَبَّكُمْ The Prophet ﷺ spent the entire night before Badr uh, in, in uh, Al-Arish, in his tent, making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, calling upon Allah, saying, يَا حَيُّ يَا قَيُّمْ Remember, حَيُّ يَا قَيُّمْ, the ever-living, the ever-sustaining, was illustrated, highlighted really in the first few juz, the first few chapters. So the Prophet ﷺ called upon Allah all night long, Ya Hayyu, Ya Qayyum, uh, O ever living and O ever sustaining, to give help and victory to the believers as they were facing this onslaught from their persecutors. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fastajaba lakum, and he answered you. Anni mumiddukum bi alfin minal malaikati murdifin, that I will reinforce you 
with a thousand from the angels. Murdifin, they're following one another. You will see the angels descend upon you. Jibreel alayhi salam and the army of the angels descend upon you uh, to help you, to assist you in that in that regard. Some of you might ask, um, you know, well, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala need to send angels? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that he, uh, you know, in, in the next couple of verses, Allah mentions that he sent even 3,000 angels. That your army was 1,000, the army against you was 1,000, so Allah sent 3,000. Why 3,000? They outnumbered you 3 to 1. The believers were 313. The, uh, the, the people of Mecca were 1,000. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent 3,000 angels to support them. Someone might ask, well, what's the point of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending angels? Why didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just give them victory? Why did the angels have to come? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا جَعَلَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بُشْرَى Allah did not send that except as a glad tidings to you. وَلِتَطْمَئِنَّ بِهِ قُلُوبُكُمْ And so that your hearts could find ease. Imagine as they looked, as the Prophet ﷺ looked and he sees Jibreel alayhi salam, the angel Gabriel and the angels coming to the battle of Badr. And he tells his side that the angels are fighting alongside you. Go forth, the angels are alongside you. And the believers are seeing the effect of the angels on the battlefield. So subhanAllah, this assured them. وَمَنْ نَصْرُ إِلَّا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ that, but, but victory only comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is exalted in might and all wise. So Allah sent the angels as an answer to their supplication. And to show them, um, you know, to show them the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps them firm in all of these different ways. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in verse 12, uh, إِذْ يُوحِي رَبُّكَ إِلَى الْمَلَائِكَةِ uh, If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired through the angels, أَنِّي مَعَكُمْ فَثَبِّتُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired to the angels, I am with you, so strengthen those who have believed. O angels, go forth and strengthen those who have believed. Stand with them, stay in their heart, uh, stay with them and, and make firm their hearts by being alongside them and fighting alongside them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that fear would be cast in the hearts of the persecutors and that they would be easily defeated as a result of coming out and facing uh, the believers, uh, you know, with the arrogance that they had and the boastfulness, after running them out of Mecca, they wanted to massacre them and they even had extra horses and extra camels with wine uh, so that after the massacre, they could celebrate. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that the, belief, that the victory came to those who believed and humiliation came to those um, who disbelieved even as, they, even as they came out so uh, confident and subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, again, admonishes the believers not to allow themselves to lose trust in God or to inherit the diseases that would cause them to turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lectures the people of Mecca. So it, it really is befitting here because most of Medina Quran focuses on the people of Medina. But here in, in, in this in this surah here, you still have a lot of verses that apply to the people of Mecca, even though it's in Madani Qur'an, even though it's in the Qur'an in Medina, it's revealed in Medina, to show them what happened to them, that, that humiliation that you were promised in Surah Al-A'raf, after you rejected, as you were told not to in Surah Al-An'am, has come to you in Surah Al-Anfal. I, I know I probably lost you guys there. Allah warned you in an An'am, the, and, and you know he gave you the, the, the blueprints or he gave you the path to success in Al-An'am, you chose failure and so in Surah Al-A'raf the consequences were, were mentioned that you would be humiliated and see now you're going to have um, you're going to have in this uh, in this verse uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning uh, the humiliation or in this surah the humiliation that actually comes to them that manifests itself in the, uh, in the battle of Badr and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, saying to the believers once again, Ya ayyuhaladina amanu istajibu lillahi wa lirrasuli idha da'akum lima yuhyikum. O oh, you who believe, respond to Allah and respond to the Messenger when they call you to that which gives you life. This is powerful stuff. This is really, really powerful stuff. Connection of the three surahs. Surah Al An'am, Allah says that people who turn away from Allah, Though the goodness of this world, or, or though, though, though the blessings of this world are open to them, the luxuries of this world are open to them, because they don't have any barakah, any blessing, 
those things become curses for them. In Surah Al-A'raf, the next Surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that when there's barakah, when there's blessing, and that which comes from the heavens and the earth, everything is good. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Anfal, answer Allah and His Messenger when they call you to that which gives you life. This message gives you life. This scripture gives you purpose. This guidance is what gives life to your heart. And that's where no matter what happens to you in, in regards to this world, no matter what the circumstances that you face in this world are, as a result of upholding that guidance and that belief, so long as you have a sense of purpose, nothing will face you. Nothing will face you. Seeing a thousand people here, uh, when they came to, to, to fight, Okay, so I got my son. I told you guys that something crazy would happen in Quran 30 for 30, eventually. We managed to hold him off for, for eight days, but uh, he came. So, inshallah, I'll let him in the next time. But anyway, um, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> so long as you stick with Allah and you have a sense of purpose, nothing phases you. The sight of a thousand people coming to wipe you out does not phase you. The sight of the, sight of the Battle of Badr does not phase you. The sight of a Donald Trump does not phase you. The sight of anything does not phase you because you know that you have a sense of purpose and you know that you've been called to that which gives you life. So that gives you the best of this world and the best of the next. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to grant us that sense of purpose and to grant us life uh, through that. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we are able to catch up now. So tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala, we'll go to just 10 and hopefully no more interruptions, inshallah ta'ala. Hopefully from now on until the end, uh, will always be consistent around this time, 4 p.m. Eastern, inshallah ta'ala, um, barring any, any, uh, any, any events that, uh, that, would make, that would cause the time to change. If I could encourage you guys, inshallah, it's still early enough, inshallah ta'ala, to get other people involved in this program. Uh, I'm personally enjoying putting together this program, inshallah ta'ala. So if I can encourage you guys to get other people involved, inshallah, to take notes, to share notes, um, you know, inshallah ta'ala, make your own notes, this will give you sort of a, uh, you know, a guide to understanding the flow of the Qur'an even outside of Ramadan, inshallah. So it's not just limited to Ramadan, even outside of Ramadan. To be able to see it all together, to see the Qur'an, the way that it flows, its perfect structure. So we ask Allah to make us people of Qur'an. Jazakallah khairan for tuning in. See you all tomorrow, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.